Goldberg, Curator of Collections here at the Filson, and welcome to another edition of Collection Reflection. Today we're reflecting on Colonel Joseph Hamilton Davis. Uh, he was a native of Virginia, born in 1774. He moved as a young boy with his family to Kentucky, settling in the Danville area. He received a good education, read law under George Nicholas, who was the father of Kentucky's First Constitution, one of Kentucky's great legal minds, and himself became a lawyer, began practicing, and was very successful. Now, in politics, he was a Federalist, and the Federalists, as Kentucky on the frontier, uh, tended to be more in the way of your Democratic Republicans, uh, Jeffersonian Republicans, if you will, and so he was kind of in the political minority. But, when John Adams was president and before he left office, he appointed Davis as U.S. Attorney for Kentucky. And so that gave him a leg up politically and uh, he continued to practice. He goes to Virginia uh, on various business. He marries the sister of another great Federalist and another great jurist, John Marshall. He married his sister, Ann Marshall. And so they come back to Kentucky uh, he tips Thomas Jefferson off in 1806 that Aaron Burr is up to something suspicious out in the West. Being a different political bent, Jefferson kind of discounted that. He thought it was all politics. Uh, of course, Aaron Burr had been vice president, but wasn't anymore. He, of course, had killed Alexander Hamilton in that infamous duel. So he was kind of on the outs politically, but Jefferson just didn't put stop in what Davis was telling him until later in 1806 when the kind of the news really became public and Jefferson realized that Burr really had decided to try to create some kind of empire in the West. It was a filibustering uh, expedition in which he was going to take over French or Spanish territory or, or something. So anyway, uh, his warning was discounted, but when they got a hold of Burr and arrested him down in Mississippi, uh, he was brought east and Davis actually brought him up on charges and tried to prosecute him for treason. Uh, however, the charges were dismissed. And so that didn't work. Henry Clay was hired as Aaron Burr's attorney in this little legal affair. And so uh, uh, two great legal minds and of course, Henry Clay and how talented he was as an orator probably talked, uh, talked everybody into believing Burr was innocent. So, uh, but he returns to the practice of law and is very successful. But by 1810, 1811, war clouds are gathering not only with the British, but with the Indians on the frontier. Tecumseh is gathering together a confederacy of Indian tribes to try to stop white advance into Indian Territory, and in 1811, William Henry Harrison, as governor of Indiana Territory, decides to actually have an offensive campaign against the Indians at Prophetstown, which is the Confederacy's headquarters in northern Indiana, near what is today West Lafayette, Indiana. Davis joins up. He's already a colonel in the Kentucky militia, uh, but now he joins as a major in the Indiana militia and Harrison, believing that he has great military ability, actually puts him in charge of all the dragoons or the cavalry for the army. And it's a relatively small army that is now marching on Prophetstown. And on the, the early morning hours of November 7th, when the army is camped just outside near Prophetstown, the Indians attack, and in one of the charges back and forth, Davis is critically, or actually mortally wounded. And he lingers through the day and then dies late that night and is buried there at the battlefield. So he dies in, in 1811. Now we have this beautiful portrait in uniform showing him as a, a colonel or major of the militia. And uh, probably this was painted posthumously uh, to memorialize him. In 1815, 
Davis, or as many say, Davies County, is named in his honor. Who painted the portrait? Well, we don't know for sure. The very wonderful museum down in Owensboro, the Owensboro Museum of Fine Art, has a portrait essentially exactly the same. And this was not unusual. Somebody famous, family members, admirers, and artists would often paint uh, duplicates of their work, uh, multiple copies. And so Owensboro has one. We have one. This came from the family so a few years back. Uh, and so it has wonderful provenance. The Owensboro Museum of Fine Art attributes their painting to Charles Wilson Peel, the famous Philadelphia painter and museum entrepreneur. Uh, that's possible. We can't say that that isn't true, but in looking at it, it doesn't look quite right either for uh, a Peel, and you wonder why Peel back in Philadelphia would have been writing or would have been painting uh, Davis, and perhaps some art historians have, have thought that this might be an early Matthew H. Jewett. Uh, Jewett, before he went off in 1816 to train under Gilbert Stewart up in Boston, did paint some portraits, and if you look at the awkwardness of the hand and some of the other features, uh, this could be kind of a pre-Gilbert Stewart Jewett painted portrait. Uh, it could be by somebody else. Uh, but we, at least we know who the subject is, and it's a very fine military portrait, uh, but we aren't for sure 100% who actually painted it. Peel, Jewett, maybe somebody else. Now, this leads us to something else. Davis, Davies, the county is spelled D-A-V-I-E-S-S. -S. Davis spelled his name D-A-V-E-I. S -S. So what happened there in the spelling? Well, in our uh, fine small collection of Davis papers here at the Filson, you can clearly see that Joseph Hamilton Davis signed his name D-A-V-E-I-S-S. -S. So why is the county spelled I-E-S-S? -S? Well, Spelling could be pretty fluid back then, even amongst family and their surnames. And Joseph's brother, Samuel, spelled his last name, at least on some occasions, D-A-V-I-E-S-S. -S. So since they were working with him, he was handling the Davis estate and helping with that. It could be that when they went to form and establish the county, they looked at how Samuel Davis spelled his name and used that spelling, or a clerk in doing the paperwork simply transposed the letters, the I and the E. And so you have Joseph Hamilton Davis with a county in Kentucky named in his honor, but not spelled the same way as his name. So another fine portrait in the Filson collection we hope that you will enjoy, uh, enjoy this and join us for another edition of Collection Reflection.